But even in this deepest of recessions, there's always someone who can be found to buck the trend. Brian now reports on a man who's looking forward to Easter and the summer beyond with a great deal of confidence. It isn't surprising that John Broom has all the appurtenances of an executive lifestyle. He made the bulk of his millions by the time he was 30. Now, eight years later, he gives the impression that he's squandering them all in a rich man's fantasy. In a corner of a thousand acre estate, he's building a mock Victorian street. But it isn't an eccentric whim and it's not for his private indulgence. Are you enjoying yourselves? Yes. Yes. Everything Broom does has a purpose. Profit, of course, is the motive. Just as it was when at the age of 16, he bought this house in Chester for 3,000 pounds, sold it later for 30,000, and began restoring other properties in the city. By the time he was 24, he was worth several million through an expanding business that now has interests overseas. And along the way, he picked up a piece of real estate called Stretton Hall, or home to him and his family. But in 1973, just when he might have been set to become another Charles Claw, Broom took, on the face of it, an extraordinary step. He bought a concession to run a train in a leisure park in Staffordshire. That early escapade was the first... Um... A bit of getting knowledge into the leisure business because there's a lot of people going into the leisure business this day and age with absolutely no professional knowledge about it at all and big companies as well as individuals and I think it's essential and so to work here on the ground um, was a very essential part of my education in leisure business before we could use the springboard and go on to better things. Broom went on to buy out all the concessions it cost him two million pounds, but it left him with control of Alton Towers, which last year had more than one and a half million visitors. We um, were adopting a family approach with, with very good value for money. I mean, for three pounds at Alton Towers, you can in fact enjoy entertainments and shows and theatres and rides that would cost you something near 50 pounds on a pay at each point structure. So when you come in, you pay just the one price ticket and everything else is free. Um, now, if you combine that with quality and cleanliness and security and a good friendly atmosphere, then you've got a, a pretty devastating uh, market uh, place. And it is uh, a contrast to, to, uh, to what has happened um, in the UK market as a whole up to, up to date. Some of Broom's ideas were imported from Disneyland, but he made sure that Alton Towers was not a copybook transplant of that American fantasy. Disney is a particularly American phenomenon. It is hard sell. There's a certain artificial element in it. It is a beautifully run concept. Capital, absolutely no object. The English market demands a little bit more of a solid approach, and this is what we're doing here. We are putting these attractions within a real country garden setting. Broome has already put 12 and a half billion pounds into Alton Towers and there's more to come. It's a capital intensive business, heavy on engineering, design and imports. This roller coaster corkscrew, which has a vertiginous popular appeal, cost one and a quarter million pounds alone.
In spite of the park's appetite for cash, Alton Towers had a turnover last year of five million pounds, on which Broom claims a trading profit of no less than 30%. This year, he expects two million visitors, with a turnover rising by a further three million pounds. In a leisure industry that's going through severe financial turbulence, projections like that seem almost too good to be true. You have the traditional um, seaside approach for many, many years, for a century or more in this country, where they have magnificent um, investment and still some very fine places, of course, around the coasts. But that view was, even with the majors, that they, um, the major companies, that uh, it's the coast that will draw the people and that's the only place you can be basically uh, sure of a return on your capital investment. Um, this isn't the case at all. Four minutes by helicopter from Alton Towers is Trentham Gardens, which he bought from the Sutherland family for three billion pounds. It's going to be turned into a conference centre with its own village, hotel, water sports and holiday cottages. It's for your area up to the top international hotel standards. He sees it as complementary to his leisure park, for which he envisages a stable future. The inland leisure park is here to stay and uh, it's only now being realised, fundamentally realised, that there is a tremendous market in this field. You see, you had Battersea that failed in London, you had Bellevue that failed in Manchester. They failed bad management. Not the concept, but the bad management. And um, I think we proved at Alton Towers that um, this market is uh, ripe for tapping even further, even more. Most leisure consultants have for some time predicted the decline and eventual extinction of the inland leisure park, the dinosaur of an age that wants something different. Broom seems to be bucking that predicted trend. Indeed, he's already looking for new sites. For a cautious, conservative businessman, it looks as if he may have found a formula that in two or three years will cause the consultants to think again. What a lovely dinosaur. <laughs>